Uh, John, let's get into some Eagles topics, man. We got BLG coming up in hour number two. Like I mentioned, Mike Gill will join us a little bit later. Appreciate everybody in the chat this morning. Uh, John, I want to talk about the Eagles offense, and I want to specifically ask you about something that was put on Twitter last night from Brian Baldinger, who's actually Baldinger. a very he's a very well connected guy. For those who know uh, Baldy, I've spoken with Baldy off the air. He's a great, he's a nice dude, uh, but he's very well connected. He hangs, he, you know, he knows Lane Johnson super well. So he was tweeting out footage of the Eagles game uh, and the use of play action, and he was doing a film breakdown on it. And somebody somebody responded back to him and said. Any idea why it took them eight weeks to do this? And he's talking about eight under, weeks to do it. They under did tenor it play action. They he did responded it back to that person and said, a few guys were tired of the offense and spoke up. Now, I don't know what his inside access is. I don't know what he's referring to with that. Many would say his, his relationship with Lane Johnson might show, but I don't know. What do you think Baldy means by, by well, Lane? Said Lane there? That it was constipated. Well, Jalen said he talked about imposing all this nonsense about, um, you know, wins and 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 losses and how the offense looks. But I I do think of the clip you're talking about, and it, you'll notice if Baldy put play action in quotes, um, because they're doing it from the gun. So, again, their play action is a little bit different than traditional play action. So, A, watch the clip. Um, every single one is from the pistol or gun um, because the under center has been a big thing because people read the box score. Um, oh, they're under center. <laughs> and they see play action, and they don't watch the clip. And every single play he clipped – they're from the shotgun or 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 pistol, um, so that would be number one. But as far as Baldy, yeah, I mean, you know, he works out in Lane's Pro Barn. You know, he's very close to Lane. Lane's very honest about constipation. He said it before. Nobody was happy with the offense, but uh, as far as these massive changes, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. I don't see it doesn't exist i said you know was, uh, a basketball writer was contacting me yesterday and i said look it, it, the the synonym for creativity because everybody says creativity like standing under center is creative i mean taking well, a no, snap I, I from center is creative no i know what you're saying i, I think there's a there's a line though of thinking where it's like this offense became predictable, or at least that's what the well, there is. There is a line of thinking. There is there's definitely line up there. Right. But here's here's what creative means in the NFL. Success. Success. Exactly. And, and and that's what I wrote back. That's the synonym for creative success. Um standing under center and handing the ball off or uh, being under center and tush pushing is the least creative thing in the world. Right, but but is it evolving? Isn't evolving to sustain sustain success uh, creative? No. Like I get what it, you're saying in terms it's, of it's not creative. It's effective. Okay. It's not that's creative. Um, I think that's what people mean when they say I, I, creative. I, well, I yeah, I agree. Yeah. So you know, when I say creative is not a synonym for success, and the best thing Nick said over the past ten days or so is success takes what it takes. Takes what it takes. By hook or by crook is what he was saying. And he says it all the time. We've got to throw it 40 times. We're going to throw it 40 times. We've got to run it 40 times. We're going to run it 40 times. Success takes what it takes. The scheme stuff changes from week to week. He said that multiple times over the past week. Um, but boy, people want to hang on to. I mean, they were good. They were good. So I, I always say that, and 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 Dan Dan Orlovsky is a guy I've been picking on, but because I'm a little bit disappointed in Dan, because A, I have a lot of respect for him, number one, and B, I think he's fallen into this crevice. Now, you 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 can you can like whoever you want to like when it comes to analysts. You can trust whoever you want to trust. I I encourage you to seek out people who know what they're talking about. 
Dan's certainly one of those people. Brian's certainly one of those people. Um, Brian Balding. Um, but Dan's out there saying they're the least prepared team in the NFL one week. And two weeks later, everything is fixed. Does that make sense to anybody? No, it doesn't. You're right about that. I mean, it, 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 it's they're playing well. They were trying to do this stuff before. They weren't playing well. They weren't effective. They weren't executing. Well, you, that, And you just said it again. You know what it reminds me of? And I think of you every time I think of this crap. They just started executing better, and, and, and now the judgment is different, and you always say it. People don't judge the play calls, and it kind of applies to a lot more in football. They just judge the results. Now that yeah. the results are showing up, you yes. know, all of a sudden they're prepared. And, 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 everything. And, and, and I get it from that perspective. But when it happens for people like Dan and people like Brian, I'm like, ugh, ugh. Because I don't think it, it, it helps people. Like, I, I think people said, you know, like what Brian essentially saying is Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore, Kellen Moore, who's been an offensive coordinator in this league uh, uh, a long time now, despite his young age, um, has had number one offenses in this league, um, developed a, 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 a certain offense for the unsuccessful games and said, oh, we're going to scrap this and we're going to do something different for the success. Again. Does anybody really believe that if you take a step back? Does anybody really believe he, he came up, oh, before the Giants game, because it's really not Cleveland, even though they've won three straight, they didn't look good against Cleveland. Um, So it's really two games. You really believe he just said, middle of the week, oh, you know what? Fuck this shit. We're going we're gonna to scrap it, and we're going to do a bunch of different stuff. I don't know if you believe that. I, I all right. I can't. You know, I'm. I'm not going to argue with you. It's just not realistic. So, you know, was was anyone happy? No, Lane verbalized it. So I'm sure he verbalized it to Brian. We're constipated. We look like shit. But I also guarantee Lane said, you know, if we execute better. It'll look better, but, you know. And they've done some different things, but that more has to do with the box score. Again, being in front of Lee. You know, that there was the, that's the big talking point this week, under center. And I think the number was 21. Uh, they were under center. So I went through the whole damn thing. 19 of them were runs. And and a bunch of them were tush pushes. So uh, it, it, it's sort of like Jordan Davis in playing time. Why isn't Jordan Davis playing? Well, you're up by twenty points. You're rushing the passer. Um, it's sort of like the same thing. Uh, uh, you're you're up by that much, and and the past two games, fourteen out of fifteen times, fifteen plays against the Giants were runs in the fourth quarter. I think it was 14 out of 18, something like that, last 18 against Cincinnati. Um, that's because of the way the game went. So, yeah, I get frustrated. I shouldn't get frustrated, but I get frustrated. Not well, with you, yeah. Xander. That's all right. I, 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 listen, if you get frustrated with me, I, I, it doesn't bother me. I mean, it is what it is. You're you're here to 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 educate the masses and me and and give us your objective, great middling analysis, John. As you point out, I'll, I'll go up and down, and you keep me right in the middle. But you tweeted out something that Kellen Moore said yesterday, and it made me think about some of our conversations in the last couple of weeks. Uh, potentially, the conversations that have left you with a concussion. <laughs> um, <laughs> But he, you tweeted out, and his quote uh, responding about Jalen being under center was, I think it's something we've talked about as a collective group. There will be different opportunities throughout games. It's come up the last few weeks, and there have been some positives with it. So we'll see where it takes us. I mean, Kellen saying that makes me believe I'm not entirely crazy when I say I think there's some good things they're doing in terms of balancing out their offensive approach. Uh, what was your what was your takeaway from Kellen saying that? Um, 
Yeah. It's, well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, people can read the same quote and see different things. Um, I, I took it. It's come up the last few weeks, as I just explained, because of circumstance. He didn't put in circumstance, but he, it's come up the last few weeks, and there have been some positives with it. Yeah, they're up 20. It's very positive. So we'll see where it takes us. In other words, if we're down 20, yeah, we're not going to be under center. That's how I took it. Um, so in your opinion, the Eagles being up 20 versus the Bengals had nothing to do with them being under center. It's more the other way around. They were under center because they got the lead. Yes. Yes, exactly. Okay. Well, yeah, I, I think there's definitely – I think I would fall into this camp of you look at the balanced approach. They were under they were, center. I, I so they what were saying of like, yeah, they're obviously going to run more when they have. A they were under lead. center so much more than they typically are. And by the way, they're last in the NFL coming into the game uh, snaps under center. And the vast majority of those were tush push type things. So doesn't even really count. Um, and and by the way, I don't think that's good. I'm not, I'm not saying it shouldn't be increased um, to to give some different looks and things like that. I'm not trying to say that. What I'm what I'm trying to say is people thinking it's some kind of sea change. Right. I I don't I don't I don't I don't believe that. Other than maybe they run the ball so effectively that it says, all right, let's do this a little bit more. But from the, the, the total sort of makeup of the offense, I, you know, in, in, in key moments of close games, they're going to be in pistol or gun the vast majority of time. Yeah, I mean, early in the Bengals game though, John, they definitely were under center a little bit. I mean, we got the halftime, it was only 10, 10. So it's not like there was a big discrepancy in scoring. Well, uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I, I you know, it's sort of like Shane with Jalen Hurts' his touches. You know, and he used to bang his head against the wall and get concussed because he did ask the question, is 12 touches sustainable? And then, you know, he'd say what he'd say on the podium, and Shane was even less forthcoming than uh, Kellen Moore. If yeah, he, that's he didn't possible. Like the podium. And, and then he would get off the podium, and he tells there's fucking four push touches in it. There's my app, but that's Shane. I'm doing a Shane. Yeah, I love There's the Shane. Four, four tush pushes, uh, three victory formations. He carried it five times. And like everybody looks at the box score. And and that was literally a conversation. Uh, by the way, I, I just broke the cardinal rule of journalism. Uh, because I shouldn't have said that because it was off the record. So forget I said that. It was. But it, it's already yeah, out. I don't there. think it was exactly what was said. You were just giving us. A it, 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 it's already out there. So I, I apologize to Shane if he's listening from Indianapolis, which I doubt because he's got his no. own issues. Yeah, he's but got his own headache. Going he's got on his there. own issues. But uh, now that I let it out there and I shouldn't have, he's like, "What the fuck, man? I mean, watch the game," is what he was essentially saying. Bunch of tush pushes. You're in victory formation. The particular game he was talking about three times. Those are all carries. If people don't know, those are counted as carries for Jalen Hurts. Both of them tush push. Right. Yeah, tush push definitely. Victory formation is a carry. Jalen's going to pass uh, Van Buren as a as a top Eagles rushing quarterback in touchdowns because of the tush push. How many tush push touchdowns does he have oh, in his career? A lot. A lot. Thirty. 25 i haven't i haven't seen the total number recently i would I'll love that i would love I'll to ask, find that number I'll ask jeff kerr he'll know he's mr yeah. stat jeff kerr um, knows everything with that he loves the stats i i could care less i care about the six points but uh yeah they're tremendous he's already third in the nfl history for quarterbacks scoring rushing touchdowns so yeah, it's unbelievable um yeah it's been quite the weapon for the Eagles and continues to be. And they ran boy, it's just like I don't four or five last week. Um 
I mean, he had three rushing touchdowns. I think uh, all three of them were tush push, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. No, no, he did. He have the one where he, he's yeah, he had the one was uh, yeah, he's scrambled. In. But yeah, he's doing he's doing. <laughs> that's been a big, obviously, weapon for the Eagles, and uh, continues to be. But man, to the larger point of, gotta be careful with those numbers, man. And making making assessments off tush pushes and victory formation. That was the issue the week prior with the Giants. They're in victory formation and a bunch of uh, tush pushes. Um, and people just pick up that box score and say, oh, he's carrying it too much. Oh, he's under four yards of carry. Well, that's one yard, one yard, one yard, one yard, one effective yard typically. Yeah. And then minus one or minus two, depending how far you're going back on right. victory formation. Minus one, minus one. That's that's seven carries for, for zero yards. <laughs> I mean, people got to be careful with that shit, but they're not. Mm. So anyway, that would drive Shane crazy. I digress, but yeah, from from the standpoint. They need to be under center more. You know, Nick Sirianni, one of Nick Sirianni's <clears throat> a thousand cliches is one he doesn't often adhere to. And it says, he, he constantly says, and I'm sure people have heard it, a wise man avoids all extremes. And he never wants to be bottom five in anything in the NFL. Well, they're bottom five in a ton of shit that he doesn't seem to be care of. Motion. Um, not this year, but years prior, under center. So nobody's saying they shouldn't have increased this stuff. But I that the meaning that people put on it is just way out of out of whack, way out of frame. Yeah, I mean, I do think I do. I will say this though, because I understand what you're saying, but I do think there is a little bit of. I mean, it looks different, and not only does it look different to people, but there are people who are writing about it even the quarterback has kind of commented on the differences i mean dave zangara i think it was from nbc dave does a really nice job so shout out to dave uh he wrote an article this morning that i read about the offense and the one big difference that the offense brought in week eight and and he said one notable difference in week eight question mark there was a pronounced uptick in snaps under center with quarterback jalen hurts and then he put a quote from jalen and he said I think it does a lot, Hertz said after the game. I think we're able to be the imposers. I think it says a lot about what you are offensively. So I'm not saying that to dispute what you said. I'm saying that that's why there's a general thinking in the air that this offense is different right now than it was in the beginning of the year because <laughs> people are writing about it. Jalen Hurts is commenting about it. I mean, Kellen Moore's being asked about it. We're all seeing it with our own two eyes. I, I think you're right that it does come down to success, but are you saying that this offense isn't any different at all or just the minor differences? <laughs> My, just minor differences, yeah. Um, and, and yeah, it comes down to execution. Now, Chandler's trying to get through a press conference. I know I knew it was going to be a big thing. I've already told you. He talked about the event. And everybody takes it and takes the baton and, Dave wrote about it. Olivia wrote about it. I'm going to be writing about it. Everybody writes about it because that's what the quarterback says. Right. Um, yeah. Trying to get through a press conference. Oh, yeah, and, I get it. But they, and they were successful. John. And they were successful. And by the way, Nick Nick has said, you know, the identity, that that's the other big word, habits and, and physicality. So they're trying to be more physical. They're trying to impose their will with, with the offensive line, which is ironic because they were down two offensive linemen, but they're still very good, obviously. Um, and they're, they are trying to take advantage and lean more on the offensive line. And that presumably will increase even more when Mackay is back. Likely this week, we'll get a better indication today and Jordan in a couple weeks. Um, which in my opinion is the right thing to do, by the way. Yeah, well, I mean, they yeah, arguably so good, yeah. you you could argue Detroit, and that's probably it. So you know, when you have the first or 
second best offensive line in football. It's been this way. It's been the strength of the Eagles for years, uh, the offensive line. And, you know, come draft time, nobody likes it. When they draft offensive linemen, nobody wanted Cam Jurgens. Uh, if you go back to when they drafted him 51 overall, now everybody's pretty happy with it. Um, nobody would have liked it this year if they would have drafted an offensive lineman. But how he would would have done it if Fal- if Faltano fell to <clears throat> fell to them, I, um, I wouldn't have minded it. I know it's not the flashy pick that everybody likes, but I love how we're a dominant team on the offensive line. Well, everyone should it, but it's not sexy in the moment. Yeah, um, I get it, but um but yeah, I mean, yeah, they should take advantage of of their offensive line. Um but that what 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 I'm trying to say that's different than changing the offense. Like the right. offense the offense hasn't changed. I I can't you know, we're 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 weak. What what week are we in? Yeah, the, yeah the Eagles. Nine. Yeah, we're week nine, and people are really thinking Kellen Moore changed his offense. By the well, way, not well, not well, coming off not different? coming off the bye, not coming off the bye magically for the Giants game. So he did it in week, uh, and it just happens to line up with being successful. Why is nobody when when people change offenses and everybody lauds them for it? Why is why are they never unsuccessful? Does anybody ever think about that? This stuff only comes up when you're successful. Oh, they changed this. They changed this. Maybe the players executed better. Maybe the players played better. Yeah, but can you see how that's a little bit of a, a, a what came first, chicken or the egg type of argument? I mean, and let not me really. You, well, I, let I me can't. just give you the stats because, and you can, and maybe you'll point to this as it's because they were winning the game. Maybe it's as simple as that in your mind. In week one, 9.5% under center. Week two, 10.3% under center. Week three, 4.5% under center. Week four, 10.7% under center. Week six, 11.3% under center. Week seven, 20% under center. And week eight, 35.6% under center. Yeah. So that's a big increase. I mean, the first six, five games, first six weeks, you were averaging probably nine to ten percent under center. Now you went twenty in week seven and thirty-five percent in week eight. It's a big uptick. That's where the people are coming from, though, when they say, "Oh, it looks different." Oh, and is and the success is there, right? You blew the Bengals off the page. We thought it was going to be a shootout. You thought the Bengals were going to win the game. I thought it was going to be a shootout with Joe Burrow. We this destroyed it. This is a different way. To have the run pass ratio conversation. I know I knew that's where you were gonna go with this. I know, yeah, I hear I get it, but that that I, I mean put down the box score, everybody, and just think about the game. And just think about what happened in the fourth quarters of each game. Now it's gonna come, it's probably not gonna come this week. Um, we talked about Jacksonville. We'll talk about him and how many issues I can't tell you when it's coming, but it's going to come where the Eagles are going to have to play in the fourth quarter and try to win a football game. And they might be down seven. They might be up seven. Um, they might be down three. They might be down 14. Obviously if they're down 14, they're going to be in the gun and they're going to be throwing the football every single play. Now, are these people going to say, oh, they should have run the ball? I don't know. Maybe. I hope not. I hope I hope it doesn't devolve to that level. Um, success takes what it takes. It, it's not a chick, chicken and the egg is you can't answer that question. Nobody knows. I know, but the offense has been more successful. And then you see an, also an uptick. So you're saying they were but, successful. But, 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 I, they were successful the last two weeks, so they ran it more. Other people can look at it and say, we ran it more and we were more successful these weeks. But they ran 14 out of 15 in the fourth quarter. 14 out of five. They did it at the end. 
That's where the large disparity comes from when you already have the lead. So it's not the chicken and the egg. The disparity comes from the score. You're clear trying, you're just trying to get out of there. Get out. Will Shipley's running the ball. Kenny Gainwell's running the ball. They're yeah, under center, not, handed that, it off. Yeah, that's fine from the run pass. I mean, run, uh, lining up under center, I think, is a, is a different percentage game, but maybe not. I mean, they were doing it. Look at the end of the game. The Will Shipley, they were, they were under center running the football. Of their 21 under center, 10 were runs to Barkley. I think five were to Gainwell. So the 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 Eagles' improvement in offensive execution in the last couple of weeks, in your opinion, has nothing to do with them being under center. No, e- execution has nothing to do with just being more successful as an offense. When, whether you're under center, whether you're in shotgun, whether you're in pistol, you can execute from anything. As as. As Baldy pointed out, and I, I encourage people to go uh, look at what he did and look at the play action, they're all from the pistol or shotgun. They executed. Why isn't anybody talking about that? Look at, look at, pull it up. I'll retweet it. Every single play, every single play he showed has the Eagles play actioning from a not traditional from the shotgun or the pistol. Every single one of them. I'm count, I'm watching it right now. Here's the second one. Shotgun. That's the deep shot to, to DeMonte Smith, the touchdown. Play action from the shotgun. Play action from the pistol. Here's the third one. Every single play, that was the um, weird motion uh, to Jahan Dotson opening up things underneath. Shotgun again, four. Four for four. Play action from the shotgun. Every single play. Every single play play successful play because baldy was only putting up successful plays every single one what why is nobody talking about that it's not it it, by the way it's not again it's not a guarantee of success it's the point that they're doing they're not doing anything from under center in the passing game 19 of the 21 were runs They've been a much more physical football team in the last couple of weeks. It's it's hard for you to dispute that, John. I, 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 I what I can I I understand what you're saying, but I think what you're trying to sell is a tough thing to sell. To what? What? But it's a tough thing to sell because people are not educated about what they're watching. I'm sorry. Nineteen of twenty-one. They just turned it around and handed the football off. If you want to do that, great. If you think that's going to lead to long-term success, great. It's not. All all, all of a sudden, if you're under center 19 of 21 times, don't you think the other team's going to pick up on that and say, oh, they're going to run the football? Don't you think that's going to make it more – does that sound creative to you? No, it doesn't, but it it has worked. Whatever they're doing in the last two weeks has worked very well. And people are looking at that and looking at the breakdown of the numbers and looking at what they're watching with their own two eyes. And they're saying, we're imposing our will now. We're being a physical football team again. I I know I'm fighting a losing battle. I don't even know why I try to fight it. Um, Well, no, I appreciate you trying to bring it. You know, if people don't want to see, again, this is just another way to have the run-pass ratio argument. If, If people don't see that, personalities of games to find those types of statistics i can't help them not that there's any it's not even necessarily it, it's a very good thing you want to be up you want to close games this is what the eagles envisioned the, their whole envision was 
we'll we'll get the lead and we will run with Saquon Barkley to close these games. And we will be better at it than we were with DeAndre Swift or Miles Sanders. That's exactly what they envisioned. There's nothing wrong with it. In fact, it's very good. But when you're running 14 out of 15 times in the fourth quarter and people derive meaning from that, like just do that the next week, that's dumb. I don't know how, uh, an, another word to use. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. But I, I mean, I mean, are you saying that that the success in the last couple of weeks has nothing to do with or, or, or isn't a product of any switches in the offense? It's simply been more successful, which has changed some of those statistics. Yes, it's 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 boring, but it's about execution. It's Kellen Moore's offense. It was Kellen Moore's offense. And you don't think won. any of the ch- any changes were made to help execute better? There's there's changes made every week from a game plan perspective based on the opponent. Right, so but they're not related be, to this. They're not related to being under center and running. The they're football. not trying to change their uh, offense. No, they're not trying to change their offense. They're trying to game plan for Jacksonville this week and. Success takes what it takes, and it'll probably look all familiar, and people will gather more, and they'll say, McMullen's wrong. Look, they did it again because of a, a shitty opponent, and, and, and maybe not. Maybe they play down, and they don't execute, and they play down. I find that hard to believe, but it's possible. It is the NFL, and then people may say, you know, what the hell are they doing? Why don't they do what they did against Cincinnati? And whether it's Dallas on November 10th, whether it's Washington on November 14th, whether it's the Rams on November 24th or the Ravens on December 1st, that stretch of games after Jacksonville, there will be a game that will drive these people insane because they will be behind and they will look like they don't want them to look because they're trying to win a football game, and it will correlate to, why didn't you just do what you did against the Giants? And I, I've been fighting this battle for over 20 years, and I'm never going to win it. Well, here's another but, stat for you, and you might not like this one, but I'm going to give it to you anyway. Uh, courtesy of Dan Orlowski, yeah, put it out I there. Eagles ran it 46 times for 264 yards on first down across their last two games. People are looking at that and saying, we're running the ball more. We have a more effective offense. We have a more balanced offensive approach, and it's led to more success. And again, the balance term. They're not uh, – all right, I'll throw it back at you, Xander. They're not balanced. How could you say they're balanced over the last two weeks? Just they've the run up, they've yeah. run the football far more than they've thrown it to a ludicrous degree. They well, well, then I would point to your stats. They've run the ball way more because why? Because the fourth quarter of the games were irrelevant well, in both have contest, both. and they and they ran fifteen times, which changed the discrepancy in the numbers. Exactly. But if you look at the first three quarters, the numbers were probably pretty close to even. But you're talking about. 40 seconds, you gave Dan stat. You gave Dan stat. So, you know, there's there's a famous quote from, uh, it's credited to Thomas Edison, but some British prime minister, it should be credited to. There's uh, three types of lies. Lies, damn lies, and statistics. You can pick up a statistic and, and meld it in any way you want, as you just did, and I just did. You 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 can look. You want to talk about balance, and then you're giving me Dan's numbers that bring up the fourth quarter, um, and closing the game with runs. And I can point to, well, you running know, at 46 times on first down is not all done in the fourth quarter of games, John. Yeah, it's done a lot in the fourth quarter. Of games. All right, I mean, if they had 14 runs in the fourth in the fourth quarter last week, how many of them were first down? A couple, four, five. Okay, now I'm down to 41. How many of it were four first downs in this game? Another five? I'm down to 36. That's 36 first down runs that didn't come in first in, in the fourth quarter. Just ballparking. 
ballpark. There's, I, 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 I don't even understand the argument. Is it balance or is it? What, what is the, the argument? The Eagles offense has seemed to take on a new approach of not wanting to just throw the ball all the time, not running go routes on first down in the beginning of the games, a more balanced approach, running the football, when, when setting happened? up the pass, and beating football teams with a good offense. Uh, yeah. that's, what the, that's what the argument right. is. Seven, 17 concussions coming, 18th coming. <laughs> I'm going to have to retire. Um, no team in football has had more 200-yard rushing games since 21 than the Philadelphia Eagles. None. No team. So when they were throwing it all the time, they were the most effective, either the most effective running team or certainly top five in the NFL. Um, with Miles Sanders back in the Super Bowl season, DeAndre Swift early last season, um, whatever. They 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 run the football since since that two and five start. Um, and then they scaled back and sort of went to more of the RPO offense. No team in the NFL has had more 200 yard rushing performances. Every time they have one, Nick gives the whole offensive line a game ball, yada, yada, yada. Yet some, some, uh, they never run the ball. They never run the ball. They never run the ball. They always run the ball, especially when they're successful. Then they really run the ball. That's what they want to do. But they want to pass to get the lead and run to close games. I, I don't know. People don't like no, it. That's I, I understand fine. that. I think, I think though. That doesn't though, mean you're never running it. It's all about efficacy. It's all about effectiveness. Right. Right. Don't you think their approach would, would improve efficacy? Their, their, their approach is the same. That's what I'm saying. The efficacy comes from it the It doesn't execution. look the same, though. And I think that's where you're fighting an uphill battle with just general general thought process. It doesn't look the same even early in games. It doesn't. It looks different than it did three, four weeks ago. It does. The Bucks game, they came out, they lined up in shotgun on the very first play and threw a go route. Threw, threw, threw the ball the over Bucks the field. Game, they didn't even, they, they, they throw the Bucks game out. They, they, they didn't even have Lane Johnson, A.J. Brown, or Well, whatever. Take any of the games in the beginning of the season. Um, well, nobody was complaining against Green Bay because they scored a bunch of points. Um. Again, it all got, nobody can put they, they look good. Again, it's look. They look good. Um, you know, we, we talked about the first quarter struggles um all season. Now they still haven't scored a damn point in the first quarter. Um, now it wasn't their fault in Cincinnati. They were moving the football well uh for the first time, by the way. Um and Obviously, because of the defense giving up, um, you know, up up to that, up to that Cincinnati game, I don't think anybody was happy with the way they started. So if you look at the Giants game, well, they started hot, you know, not hot, but it, Jalen Hurts, first play of the game, passed A.J. Brown for 11 yards. Then they run it and get one yard. Then they're behind, uh, not behind the sticks, but they're second and long. And then Jalen Hurts gets sacked. Um, and then he throws the short pass on third and long to to Saquon Barkley. That was the big, you know, when everybody got fired up because he ran over the yeah. Giants, but they had the punt. So, you know, they started the game how they usually start the game, and it wasn't effective. Um and they have been effective largely in the first quarter. And they've run it a lot. I've gone okay, well, let me ask this. you this, because I, I hear what you're saying. Let me ask you this. How much of an impact does Saquon Barkley's success with the Eagles have on the Eagles' passing game? Not that he would be the you know the guy making the catches, but just making life easier in the passing game. Any at all? Not as much as it should. They haven't been as effective throwing the football as they typically are. Um, 
you know, so hopefully that changes. It started to change a little bit last week. And that's ironically, that's that's what I took out of the game. All right, all right they're finally getting Devontae involved, you know, long touchdown. AJ's AJ. They both over 80 yards, six out of seven targets for, for Devontae, five out of six for AJ, even three out of three for Grant Calcaterra. So you know, it started to get better um, against Cincinnati. That's where it should be. Um, for most of the season, it hasn't been there. Um, and you would think it would get better with having the better running back, but it hasn't to this point. Now, hopefully, there's still plenty of time. Hopefully, that's where they're going because it should be easier. It definitely should be easier, but it hasn't yeah. been to this point. You know, well, for, for all the talk, I mean, so many fans thought last year's offense was the worst in the history of the world, you know. And it was, again, it was it was top eight in the league. Um, certainly more effective throwing the football than they have been early this season, which doesn't make a lot of sense because you have a running back having having the tremendous season. So that's a lot why people were criticizing, and I think rightfully so, um, Jalen Hurts, to be honest. But right now they're they're eighth overall in offense. Eighth overall. Ironically, the same spot where they ended last season. But they are 20th in passing off. Yeah. So it's actually gotten worse and it should be getting better. Um, yeah. And hopefully it will. And it, and, and it did against Cincinnati Yeah, and that's their best game. So, I mean, that's what you're striving for. Um, you want to be up 20, you know, you want to be up big in the fourth quarter, every game, and you want to be able to just run the clock out. Um, and they did, and it was a, it was a great performance. So I know everybody wants to translate that to every week moving forward. I'm just saying it's not possible. That's all I'm trying to say. It's yeah. I just, possible. I mean, look, I think both are important. You can't be one dimensional either way, whether it's run or pass. They've I mean, never I'm... been run one dimensional ever. This is the least one dimensional team in the NFL since 2021. L literally least. And I say that, you know, because they're much better running the football than Kansas City. Much better. And that's because of their offensive line, for the most part. Um, and even Saquon will tell you that. I mean, Jimmy Kemsky, um, talk about a stat since we're we're in stat day. I'll, I'll give Jimmy, I'll try to pull it up. Um Saquon Barkley, um, the difference between playing behind an awful offensive line, the Giants, and an elite one, obviously the Eagles. Average yards before contact, 18, 2018, 2.2 .2 with the Giants. 2019, 1.8. 2020, negative 0.1, which is amazing. 2021, 1.9. 2022, 2.5. That was his high with the Giants. 2023, 1.9. You want to guess what 2024 is? Right there. Same number. 1.7.3. Oh, before contact. I thought you meant after. Yes. Contact. Yeah, before contact. Four, oh, he's actually below. I was going to say, been, I thought he was a little worse. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, miss, I, I misheard you. No, yeah, before. That's that's all offensive line right there, right? Yeah. I mean, 4.3. Now, average yards after con contact before the injury, 2018, 2.8. Tremendous number, by the way. 2019, 2.8. 2021, 1.8. 2022, 1.9. 2023, 2.0. 2024, 1.6. He's actually at a career low in average yards after contact. Yeah. 
good conversation there, John. I have one more question about the offense. <laughs> and I asked Celia this yesterday, and I'll ask oh, you God. this. No, 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 it's not. It's nothing, nothing bombastic. <laughs> when the hell is a team going to figure out how to stop the tush push? No, they're not. I mean, that, 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 that's the whole point. I mean, it's unbelievable. We, we start every drive, John, it's first and nine. Uh, there's no stopping it. I mean, that's, I mean, again, the Bengals uh, knew I, it was coming. Say, they even knew what gap they were running it in, John, and they still couldn't stop it. When, when I say embrace the uniqueness of the player, embrace the uniqueness of the player, uh, so many teams have tried to run the tush push, and they, they fail miserably because they don't have a quarterback that can deadlift yeah. 650 pounds. Um, and I've maintained back when everybody was losing their mind and the NFL, people thought the NFL was going to ban it. Um, I said, who cares? Jalen Hurts is going to be awesome running a traditional quarterback sneak. Um, way better than the average quarterback. And really the Eagles going back to Carson Wentz have been tremendous at traditional quarterback sneaks. Um, a lot of that had to do with Kelsey, obviously, but um, and Carson, because Carson's a big, strong dude as well. But um, yeah, they've been good at it a lot of times, a lot of times. Um, and they would be good at it even if they did ban it, and they're not going to ban it. Um, yeah, it's, pretty, it's just unbelievable that that there's no NFL team out there. I can figure out how to stop that damn thing. So I agree with Scott. He's like, that's why you never quit running it. It's totally demoralizing. It is. It's a bully play. Meet me oh, in yeah. the hole because we're always uh -huh. better than you. It is, man. In a physical yeah. game, it's, it is. I just want to bring that up because I thought it was impressive. Three super chats, John, we'll get to, and then we'll get to a commercial break. Uh, we have BLG coming up. Good first hour of the show today. Plenty watching. Appreciate all of you guys. Make sure you guys smash that like button. We've been doing better on Birds 365. Still a long ways to go, though on what we can do on likes. I'd like to try and get to like a 200 baseline on birds, but we keep falling well short of that. Daniel, I'm Bigelow, angering right? too many people, Sander. I'm yeah, angry. We, um, but the, whether it's me or it's you, it, it's a different day, different anger, yeah. different person angering the people. Daniel Bigelow says, I agree with John. If we come out on opening drive and run three times and go three and out, we'd be pissed they didn't throw the ball. <laughs> oh, they'd be, yeah. Well, oh, yeah, Daniel, I never said to do that. I mean, shit, that's not balance. Yeah, well, I, I, yeah, I, I love the people. You got to stay disciplined, and uh, yeah, they, they would lose their minds if they were down ten nothing trying to be disciplined with the the running game as well. Um, but it is what it is. It just you know drives me nuts. But I'm fighting a losing battle. I realize that. Prince Swayze checks in. John, tell Doug to leave us with Trayvon Walker. Shit, <laughs> yeah, tell him. Well, they are selling. I, you know, I, I don't know if you can, you know, look, the Eagles made a mistake, it seems, on Bryce Huff. Um, I, I don't know. You're going to bench a $51 million edge rusher? I, I don't know. Yeah, that's going to be. I, I mean, technically, problem. Vic would do it. <laughs> Vic would do it. You can do whatever you want, technically. But again, are we talking about realism or I I just don't know if Howie is gonna is gonna be able to go down that route. I don't see it either with Howie. I, I think Vic would have no problem doing it, but I don't see Howie doing it. Oh yeah, Vic. You see care. Demon checks. I don't know what this means, John. You might have to clarify. I don't know if you'll know either. He says we need deli tickets at the press conference at NBC Dave. I don't, I don't no, know. I don't know what that means. Sorry, VC. Hate to break it to you, but we can't answer that sucker. Appreciate everybody in the chat today. Hit that like button. A nice conversation on the Philadelphia Eagles offense uh, here on Bird 365. We'll get to our first commercial break, uh, and we will talk to BLG coming up at around 920. So thanks for being here, everybody. Before I get to our break, let me tell you about the great people at BetUS. You can see the promo code on your screen and the scroll on the bottom of the screen. YouTube 150 is the code, and it gives you 150% sign-up bonus on your very first deposit, and you even get 125% on your second and third deposit, all up to $2,000. So deposit less and bet with more at BetUS. Go to BetUS.com.pa 
That's betus.com.pa for the fastest payouts in the industry. 24-7 customer support, and they'll even give you your own custom account manager. Big shout out to BetUS for sponsoring the show today. Uh, We'll be back in three minutes, everybody, on Birds 365. If you missed any of today's show on the Jacob Media channel, listen to the podcast on your way home. Available on YouTube, Apple, and Spotify.